Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 in Tech. My name is Carlos Casanova. I'm here with my co-hosts Kathleen Wilson and Shane Carlson. Hello. Hey guys. Uh, and today we have Steve Convey from, uh, from Accenture. Hello, Steve. Uh, welcome to uh, the podcast. Hey, everyone. I'm uh, delighted to be here. Great to have you. So, uh, Steve, I know you've uh, been doing quite a bit of work, but why don't, um, why don't you give us a little bit of background on some of your latest uh, ventures, and, um, and we'll go from there. Sounds great, Carlos. So, uh, by way of introduction, um, I lead uh, Accenture's technology practice in Canada. Um, which means all the work that we do with our clients around system integration, uh, technology architecture, application development, application services. I lead that business in Canada. Cool. Uh, you know what, uh, Carlos, there's a lot of cool things going on with our clients in Canada. We have a lot of demand right now for um, the standard IT stuff, system integration, but lots of interest in what we're calling at Accenture the new IT, cloud virtual assistants, analytics, artificial intelligence, IOT. So, you know, one of the cool things that uh, we've just launched recently is our Liquid Studio in Toronto as a way of meeting some of those requirements and demands. Cool. So, I mean, I know, you know, I've got a lot of friends up in Toronto. I mean, there's a good, um, you know, drinking population. there. I'm assuming that Liquid Studio is not around uh, microbrews or anything like that. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about, uh, about Liquid Studio? Sure. One of the questions I get asked the most is, what is, an, what is a Liquid Studio and why the word liquid? Um, so in a nutshell, Liquid Studio is all about a place, um, tools, and people to help our clients build for change. So to have them move from a traditional way of doing change in IT to support change to new ways of thinking using technologies and tools, new skills, and new ways of working. Why the word liquid? Well, it's supposed to connotate flexible, fluid, um, movable, fast, as opposed to uh, rigid and monolithic. So that's the, that's the reason why we've coined the phrase liquid studio. So, so uh, Steve, I heard you mention uh, uh, quite a few things there that um, are, are very high on the hype cycle right now in the technology world, you know, Internet of Things, AI, uh, a number of other things, you know, converging in the cloud. You know, tell us what that really looks like, you know, in, in the day-to-day -day life of a lot of the, the businesses that are embracing this form of digital transformation. Sure. Well, let me give you some examples. Um, working with a few uh, clients in Toronto, mm -hmm around the idea of, for example, how do I use artificial intelligence in my day-to-day -day business? And what is the relationship between that and big data, some of the tools and techniques around um, going and getting, getting after some of that data using Internet of Things? How do I use advanced analytics? So what we do with those clients is bring them into the studio, um, spend some time with them in ideation workshops, um, could be around a specific use case, it could be around a specific business problem, and then demonstrate to them the art of the possible in using some of these technologies. How do other companies, for example, grab data from um, multiple sources through IoT? How do they then house it in a data warehouse? And then how do they do advanced analytics on that and build some business insights? So a lot of what we do with our clients is bring them into the studio, have uh, users, and the IT organization together, um, ideating around a specific use case, and then actually building out a, a prototype and demonstrating it in a, uh, in a um, um, sort of a confined, safe environment. Excellent. Cool. So, um, so Steve. I mean, uh, Kathleen, sorry. No, I had a delay. I apologize. Yeah, it's okay. No, Steve, I was kind of interested in some of the use cases. Are they based on industry silos or, you know, like what are the, what is the demographics of the people that come to the studio to, and what kind of scenarios are you running them through? Yeah, great question, Kathleen. So, um, of course, the Liquid Studio in Toronto is new, so a lot of the stuff we're doing is emerging. Um, let me give you some examples of some of our other Liquid Studios around the world and some of the work that they've been doing. Really good example is in Europe. Um, we uh, recently worked with an airline and their use case was around building a better um, consumer experience. So they wanted to build, they had this idea of building a smart assistant that would allow their um, users to 
check flight information, check TSA wait times, um, plan their routes, um, get tra other types of travel information. So we brought the uh, airline staff and IT organization into a liquid studio in Europe. And we built out an idea around a Amazon Echo uh, based application that would allow uh, their customers to use Amazon Echo to access that kind of data. And uh, at the end of it, we built out the prototype, um, linked it into a number of their systems and demonstrated how this particular technology could be used to improve the consumer experience for their customers. Interesting. Another interesting example is actually a Canadian example. A, um, we have a client who's in the business of um, selling and servicing heavy equipment for the uh, mining industry. And they were interested in understanding how they could use IoT and analytics to understand their assets, the assets in the field, health, and um, be able to predict um, maintenance issues and then to be able to respond to those issues. So we built out an IoT platform that went out and grabbed data from all of their assets in the field that are in the hands of their customers and brought it all into an analytic, analytical tool that allowed senior management to be able to understand the, as, the asset health um, when um, they were having service problems and then to be able to, to deploy technicians into the field uh, to uh, deal with those service problems. So Kathleen, those are the kinds of things that our clients are coming to us uh, for and um, the kinds of things that we're building. I so will tell you, Toronto, um, there's an awful lot you can imagine in uh, Toronto, we're very, very focused on financial services. So we've got a lot of interest from the banks uh, in, um, in um, different uh, use cases and scenarios for, for the financial services industry. And there's an awful lot of uh, interest from retailers as well. So Steve, the, um, it sounds like uh, what you were just saying, Liquid Studio is, is new to Toronto, but not necessarily to sort of the world deployment. So how many other studios are there? Yeah, so our initial uh, Liquid Studio was in Silicon Valley, and by far that's our uh, most established and uh, our largest studio. Uh, but since then, we've opened one in Houston in New York. Um, IALA's uh, Europe is way ahead of us. Uh, there's actually 10 Liquid Studios opened in Europe. Wow. Um, Milan, I'm going to miss all of them, but Milan, Paris, uh, Riga, Stockholm, uh, London, and um, a handful of other cities. And then in APAC, we have three Liquid Studios open, one in Manila, one in Singapore, and one in Sydney, Australia. Cool. So it's All obviously, a, 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 so it's obviously a, a sort of a proven uh, model that, that uh, you guys have been using for a while. It is, you know, and I'll tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a component of what we do, right? And, and responding to our clients' desire to do experimentation using new technologies to be able to not have to wait three or four months to get to a minimum viable product, but rather to be, some, be able to do something very, very quickly. The idea of this, this concept of failing fast on ideas that don't work so that you can move to new ideas um, in, in, a, in a, an environment where the level of investment to fail fast is not that great. But as part of a broader strategy we have around bringing um, innovation to our clients, you know, there's other components in the system. Uh, we have our, our Accenture Research, which does basic research around how to use technologies and emerging technologies and the impact that those technologies are going to have on the way we live and on how businesses operate. We have our ventures business, which is all about working with startups and organizations around new technologies. We have Accenture Labs, which is all about experimentation with new technologies. We have innovation centers and we have our very large delivery centers and the delivery centers are important, right? Because when, when a liquid studio um, takes an idea from just an idea to something that we've actually prototyped, the question that a client might ask then is what now? If it's a great idea and we want to industrialize it, how do we do that? Well, then we can take um, that idea and then move it into one of our delivery centers and actually start to deliver these solutions at a, um, an industrialized scale. Excellent. 
Steve, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been very uh, informative. Uh, you know, as someone who follows the the emerging trends in the industry, um, you know, I think it's really great to see people that are going out there and uh, you know exhibiting leadership and trying to get companies you know past the the fear factor, if you will, of of jumping into these uh, worlds that are not only new and exciting but also a little bit scary uh, when when you haven't been down that path before. So. I do greatly appreciate you joining us today and uh, hope to see you out in the industry. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Steve.